creeps, Andy here, and today I wanted to talk about Stephen King. I've long wondered why Stephen King wrote under the pen name Richard Bachman, and I just kind of assumed when I was younger that that's what authors did. They wrote under pen names until they were able to make a name for themselves, and then they made a transition to their actual name, and that is not the case here. Stephen King actually wrote successfully under Stephen King before writing novels as Richard Bachman. So recently I purchased this book right here which is the Bachman books for novellas by Richard Bachman and in the beginning there's an introduction from Stephen King called Why I Was Bachman and there's a lot of interesting stuff in here so I thought I would just make a quick video in case you guys were wondering why he wrote under Richard Bachman as well. There's a lot of information on why he wrote under Richard Bachman, why he merged Richard Bachman with Stephen King, uh, who Richard Bachman was, and a lot of interesting stuff. So let's just jump on in. Okay, so between 1977 and 1984 is when five novels were published under the pseudonym Richard Bachman. They were Rage, The Long Walk, Roadwork, The Running Man, and Thinner. He says here that there are two reasons why Stephen King and Richard Bachman ended up becoming one human. He says first is because the first four books, all paperback originals, were dedicated to people associated with my life. And second, because my name appeared on the copyright forms of one book. So when people started reading the Bachman books, some people became suspicious that the writing style was similar to Stephen King's. And one dedicated fan did a lot of research and a lot of digging and found some paperwork with the copyright under Stephen King's name for a Richard Bachman book. In here he also has a paragraph talking about how sometimes there's just a voice in his head that tells him to do or not to do something and he's the type of person that listens to that voice. It says here, one day it occurred to me that I ought to publish Getting It On. Getting It On was the original title of the Rage novella, novel, novella, a novel which Doubleday almost published two years before publishing Carrie under a pseudonym. How crazy would that have been if Rage was the first work that became popularized under the name Stephen King? That would be a whole different t trajectory for his career, I feel like. I mean, he's the king of horror, and I don't know that that would have been true if he had started out publishing novellas like Rage, which aren't necessarily horror, horrible things happen in them, but they're much different than, you know, Misery and Carrie and a lot of his first original work. So that really surprised me and it just seems like the puzzle pieces fell into place the way that they were supposed to. There's also a quote in here that says, I never really planned anything big that I ever did, and that includes the books I've written. I never sat down and wrote one page without anything but the vaguest idea of how things would come out. I just love reading Stephen King's quotes about writing, especially because, one, he's a huge inspiration to me, and also because I write stories myself, so I don't know, I just wanted to share that with you in case you guys like writing as well, or just find it interesting. He also says that he wrote five novels before Carrie, and only two of them were good, Rage and The Long Walk. He also says, this is just like a fun little fact, but he says that he and his, I don't know if it was his publisher or his agent or whomever, but they called Richard Bachman Dickey. So like, hey, does Dickey have any more work? I just thought that was a fun little bit of information. He also says in here that The Long Walk was actually rejected and kind of placed in his failed manuscript pile for a long time, which again is more inspiration, I think, for writers to know that not everything that gets rejected is a bad story, and that's something that's hard to come to terms with after getting rejection after rejection after rejection. He also references Paul McCartney in here. This is pretty interesting too. It says in 60 or 69, Paul McCartney said in an interview that he and the Beatles had discussed the idea of going on the road as a bar band named Randy and the Rockets and they would wear masks. And it says when the interviewer suggested that they would be recognized by their voices, Paul seemed at first startled and then a bit appalled. And he goes on to say, memo to Paul McCartney if he's there. The interviewer was right. They would have been recognized by their voices, but before you even open your mouth, they would have recognized George's guitar licks. I did five books as Randy and the Rockets, and I've been getting letters asking if I was Richard Bachman from the very beginning. <laughs> 
first let's get into who Richard Bachman is and then we'll get into the reasons why he wrote under him because I thought that this was interesting. I guess Richard Bachman has an entire backstory. He even has a picture on the earlier Bachman books. Um, actually, I think I have a Bachman book. I wonder if it has a Stephen King picture. Hold on, let me check. Okay, this is funny. Well, I'll find a picture of who Richard Bachman is because this is just a picture of Stephen King. A young Stephen King. And it says Richard Bachman died in 1985. <laughs> His uh, widow discovered the manuscript for the regulators along with other writings in the attic of the Bachman residence in New Hampshire. Both Thinner and the Bachman books are available in paperback. <laughs> and so uh, this is the regulators. But anyways, let me tell you about the backstory of Richard Bachman. That's pretty funny. But it says here that he has a wife named Claudia Inez Bachman. It says that he was a fairly unpleasant fellow who was born in New York and spent about 10 years in the Merchant Marines after four years in the Coast Guard. He ultimately settled in rural central New Hampshire, where he wrote at night and tended to his medium-sized dairy farm during the day. The Bogmans had one child who died in an unfortunate accident at the age of six. He fell into a well and drowned. <laughs> Sorry, that's not funny, but it's just funny that he has this whole backstory. It says, three years ago, a brain tumor was discovered near the base of Bachman's brain. Tricky surgery removed it, and he died suddenly in February of 1985 when the Banger Daily News, my hometown paper, published the story that I was Bachman, a story which I confirmed. <laughs> oh, I just love this so much. So now let's talk a little bit about why Stephen King chose to become Richard Bachman. Here it says, sometimes it was fun to be Bachman, like a recluse and he never had to give interviews, which I'm sure would be kind of a relief for someone like Stephen King at the time. This particular opening was written in 1985, so obviously in the younger years of Stephen King. When he wasn't the Stephen King he is today, he can release a book and obviously not have to go on book tour and things like that now. It also says here that people have asked him if they, if he published under a different name because he thought he was overpublishing the market as Stephen King, and he says no, but his publishers did. He says that Bachman was a compromise for both of them. It says, my Stephen King publishers were like a frigid wifey who only wants to put out once or twice a year, encouraging her endless horny hubby to find a call girl. Bachman was where I went when I had to have relief. <laughs> and then it says, this does nothing, however, to explain why I felt this r restless need to publish what I write when I don't need the dough, which I think this has always been something that inspires me about Stephen King is that no matter how old he gets or how many books he has or how successful he's become, he always just writes. And for me, that's a real writer, somebody who has to write, who feels like it's their purpose here on earth to write stories. And so the fact that he continues to do so, I think is just a sentiment to the fact that he really is a true writer. Sorry, this is me from slightly in the future, but I forgot to add this little quote in here that I also found interesting. He says, I've been asked several times if I did it because I felt typecast as a horror writer. The answer is no. I don't give a shit what people call me as long as I can go to sleep at night. <laughs> okay, carry on with the rest of the video. But he also makes a statement here at the very end of this paragraph that says, it is for some reasons depressing to think it think it was all or even mostly an accident. So maybe you try to find out if you can do it again, or in my case, if Bachman can do it again. I think he really was just testing himself and to see if Bachman could reach some level of success, maybe not to the success that Stephen King did, but maybe to see if he could, you know, perhaps create a fan base for this writer. But he also does state that he kind of had the odds against Bachman, that he wasn't promoting these books the way that Stephen King books are promoted. They were just printed in paperback and just kind of slid into bookstores, which is impressive the fact that I think Bachman created a fan base at all. So he really tried to have these Bachman books have a low profile. However, I thought this was really interesting. Thinner sold 28,000 copies as Bachman, which isn't a New York Times bestseller, but that's still a decent amount of copies for a relatively unknown author. And it says that that was 4,000 more than Night Shift sold in 1978, 
which is absolutely wild. And I've gotten comments from you guys throughout my videos that you guys think Night Shift is the best Stephen King anthology out there. So that's pretty crazy that Bachman outsold Stephen King on one book that has become one of his most successful and popular books. He ends this section by saying, is it work that takes you to the top or is it just the lottery? Still unanswered. So he feels like Richard Bachman didn't really get to fulfill his full purpose and see if he could reach any level of stardom because of, you know, having to eventually combine with Stephen King. He also says, but the fact that Thinner did 28,000 copies when Bachman was the author and 280,000 copies when Stephen King was the author might tell you something. Actually, it says Steve King. Oh, that's weird. Steve King? What if, he, what if his name was Steve King? That's uncomfortable in my mouth. And the ending here just goes into a little bit of detail about the Bachman books. He says, are they good novels? I don't know. Are they honest novels? Yes, I think so. They were honestly meant anyways and written with an energy I can only dream about these days. He talks a little bit about where he was mentally when he wrote some of these stories and how he kept them in print because he still feels like they're worth reading. And that of course was written in 85 before Rage was retracted from these Bachman books. You can still buy the Bachman books, it just doesn't have Rage in there. Or you can find it on eBay like I did. Uh, I paid like 30 or 40 bucks for this copy with Rage in it. So anyways, there you have it, straight from Steve King's mouth, why he was Richard Bachman. I just thought that this was interesting, it answered a lot of questions that I had. Oh, but this is really interesting too, let me end it here. This has nothing really to do with Stephen King, but I just thought that this was kind of an interesting bit of information. It says, there is a stigma attached to the idea of a pen name. This was not so in the past. There was a time when writing of novels was believed to be rather low occupation, perhaps more vice than profession, and a pen name thus served a perfectly natural and respectable way of protecting oneself and one's relatives from embarrassment. As respect for the art of the novel rose, things change, and it goes on to say that now it's kind of reversed and it's stated a lot of people question like if you wrote under a pen name then it must not be that good of a book and if it's that good then you would stand behind it and use your real names. I just thought that that was really interesting, a little bit of information that I actually didn't know. So there you have it, that is why Stephen King wrote under Richard Bachman. Let me know how you feel about the Bachman novels and let me know what your favorite Stephen King book is. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon with of course another horror video. <laughs> Bye guys!